Good morning, everyone. This is Brad Weber. Welcome to Local Umbrella Connect with Local Umbrella Media. Uh, we are here in the beautiful IQ Podcast Studio in Coronado, and I have a really special guest today. Uh, we'll be here this weekend, Mr. Brett Rapkin uh, from from uh, Podium Pictures, correct, Brett? Correct. And, uh, you're the producer, director, executive producer, director, co-writer of a amazing movie that's going to be shown here in Coronado on Sunday called The Weight of Gold. And uh, we want to play a little bit of a two minute, we got about a two minute video, Brett, if that's okay, we're going to play for, for our audience and then we'll come back and talk about the video. But I think when you see this video, everyone, you'll see some famous athletes and others that you, uh, you're going to recognize these names because these, are, this is, this is uh, quite a picture. You need to watch this. So we'll come right back. Michael Phelps is one of the fastest swimmers in the world. None of us had normal childhoods. I want to win. I knew it was the biggest stage that I would perform for in my life. For Olympians, that's what defines you. Athletes have worked their entire lives for this moment. I wanted to do everything I could to be the best skater I could. Everything revolves around this sole focus, and that sole focus is the Olympics. And now the next 40 seconds will dictate our human lives. But after the Olympics, the village doors close, and that's kind of it. Win or lose, I've felt a dramatic emptiness. We're just so lost. A good 80%, maybe more, go through some kind of post-Olympic depression. It's gold and then what? I didn't develop outside interests. I thought of myself as just a swimmer and not a human being. That's where I was just like, why don't I just end it all? From the outside, it's like you got everything. Athletes just don't talk about our weaknesses. That just cracks the facade. The mainstream media love building somebody up and then come crashing down. Depression puts you into a spiral. You start getting deeper and deeper into it. He was my best friend. We have to do something. And this is important. Youth around the world watch and look up to these people. I'm giving my blood, sweat, and tears. And all I'm asking is that someone can help me get through this. We're human. I don't think I have to say anything else. Welcome back, everyone. Well, if that doesn't make you want to watch this movie as much as I do, you need. We'll talk a little bit more uh, and make you want to watch it because, um, Brett, you can talk about uh, you know what brought you to this, why you made this movie. This is May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and uh, you know this summer I know we've all been kind of uh, it's been in the mainstream media about um, a famous athlete who kind of uh, some of this mental. These mental issues affected their performance, and uh, well, tell us about about the movie, Brett, and about your background, and and uh, you know about this issue. Sure, uh, I've been producing, writing, directing films for close to twenty years. I'm a LA native, and um, yeah, I always tried to uh, infuse my projects with some kind of social good. Uh, I figure if you're going to spend all the the time and money to do these things promote them and everything, you know, why not um, have them be something that can actually help people. But, um, you know, this project, uh, it started with, it was just supposed to be a short film about the, the at that time, current captain of the Olympic bobsled team, mm -hmm. his name is Stephen Holcomb. And uh, our mutual eye doctor here in Los Angeles connected us. And uh, I did a, uh, we did a long interview with Stephen here in Los Angeles as he was preparing for the 2018 winter Olympics mm -hmm. and um, but 12 days after uh, our interview with him, we'd also gone out to dinner and started to get to know each other a little bit. I got a call from his agent that he had passed away in his, uh, in his uh, room at the Olympic training center in Lake Placid. There's I think four around the country, including one 
of course, down by you in, in Chula mm -hmm. Vista. And, um, you know, the project kind of died along with him at that point. Mm -hmm. I made some calls to, you know, the usual suspects, broadcasters and, and brands, and nobody wanted to touch it. And, um, you know, a couple of months later, I, I happened to come across an article about post-Olympic depression and how prevalent it, it, it is and started to interview more athletes who I had relationships with. Um, Bodie Miller, a longtime ski racer who lived down in San Diego for a while. I think he might still have a yacht down there um, and a few others. And uh, eventually we partnered with Michael Phelps and did one of the first of two interviews with him and you know, really got confirmation that uh, this was a serious issue, is a serious mm -hmm. issue for Olympians like it is for so many of us. Right. Um, but also learned from Michael that, you know, he didn't feel that the resources that were being provided to the athletes was uh, up to par. Mm -hmm. And so we had a chance to include that in the film as well. Mm -hmm. uh, which ultimately, HBO acquired and, and did a fantastic job uh, putting out there. Yeah, well, congratulations and, and thank you, for, thank you for doing this. You know, it's uh, not just the real famous athletes. Lots of athletes that aren't quite that famous, I'm sure, are going through the same thing. And we sit back and watch them on TV, and you know, we expect them to f perform. And uh, what happened this summer with Simone Biles and all that? It's just, it, you know, at least to enlighten people to what you're talking about here is this. Th there's a lot of pressure. I mean, we can't even. Most of us can't even imagine how much pressure <laughs> there is to perform for. For yourself your family but your country and and um that's just it adds up and it's not easy and it's mental health always been a, a hidden disease because it's not right on the surface but uh fortunately we're becoming more aware of it and movies like this um you know are helping so much so thank you for taking the project on and doing such a beautiful job with it yeah absolutely and you know while this documentary happens to be focused on uh, not just Olympic athletes, but several of the greatest of our, our time yeah. from Michael Phelps uh, to Apollo Ono and, and the list goes on and on. Sean White, Lolo Jones, etc. cetera. Um, I think we can all see ourselves in these people because we're all dealing with pressure, yeah. whether it's financial pressure, family issues. Um, so what, what I hope the film does and, we're doing more of these. We have three new ones we're putting together with uh, three other athletes that we can talk about if, if you like. Sure. Um, but I, you know, I, I hope it, it gives everybody sort of the freedom to recognize that we all, as long as you've got a brain in your head, and as I like to say, most of us do, <laughs> you're yeah. going to deal with your mental health just like you got to deal with your physical health. And Absolutely. And it's sometimes yeah. last on the list until something tra traumatic really happens. And some people, as you, you just explained, some people don't get through it. So uh, it's better to prepare for it and see it coming versus wait until it's too late. And a lot of these athletes, I think I just said it before, but these are, these are the winners, the people on this film that I saw in the clip. These are the people that actually – you know, they accomplished things and won. And what about the people that got second and third place? Uh, that uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like that might be a bigger issue because they, they didn't quite get to the Olympics or they didn't quite get to the gold medal podium. And, you know, that's even, that can be even worse than the ones that won. I would think we don't hear about them. That's one of the, one of the, the topics that we cover in the film is, is about the, the financial side of being an Olympian and, um, it, it's not what, what most of us might think, you know, there's a very, very small percentage of these, these athletes who, um, make a decent living, let mm -hmm. alone a good living. And the rest, uh, don't, don't make much at all. In fact, a lot of them lose money being an Olympian. And I'd like to see that change. There's a, a tr there's billions of dollars that are being pumped through the system from sponsors, from television broadcast rights, and, uh, very little of it makes its way down to the athletes and um that that needs to change at some point yeah, i agree you know the, the college athletes they came up i forget the acronym but they came up with the program now where they can they can do commercials and sell their uh, their images and that type of thing and make a few bucks some some are making more than a few but at least yeah. it's something and uh, i'm certainly on the side of you know let's let's pay them you know these these athletes really change their whole lives i mean when you're a michael phelps or any of these people on the film this isn't a hobby. I mean, it's hours and hours and hours of grueling effort and you kind of give up a lot of your life to, uh, go after that, that goal and that gold. And, uh, uh, you know, 
you're, you're always missing something because it's going to throw something else out of balance as far as being a balanced lifestyle. That's true. It's a tremendous amount of sacrifice. And, you know, again, for, for a lot of us, do we have that balance in our own lives? I know it, it can be a challenge for me. It's so easy to, you know, you wake up and you look at your phone, you got these emails and texts and you just start working, you start responding uh, before giving your chance, uh, yourself a chance to even really wake up and meditate or exercise or whatever it is that gives you that balance. And um, yeah, it's something that we all need to, to bring more attention to. Great. So the film's going to be shown here in Coronado. Uh, I think it's at 1030, if I'm not mistaken, um, on on uh, Sunday morning, May, May. What's the date, sir? May 13th. Sorry, I'm not very good with the calendar. It's not in front of me. May 13th this Sunday. Um, so, you know, it's open to the public. There's tickets available. Uh, we'll show you at the end of the show where to go look for tickets. And uh, tell us a little bit more about what people are going to, you know, you're going to have interviews with all these people that were in the trailer and there's going to be some lessons to learn, um, you know, maybe some steps to take and awareness to, uh, to be absorbed. So tell us a little bit more about what people are going to learn. Yeah. The yeah. film takes you on, on the journey of being an Olympian mm -hmm. uh, and more specifically an American Olympian, you know, pretty much all of these kids are discovered as kids and somebody says, you know what, you're, uh, you can be an Olympian. Mm -hmm. And thanks to support from usually their parents, um, they buy into it and, and, and dedicate their lives to it. A lot of them stop playing other sports. You know, Michael Phelps talks about he played baseball and different sports, mm -hmm. but at some point it became all about swimming. Um, but the film takes you on the journey, you know, going to, if you actually make the Olympics and opening ceremony and what an incredible high that is. And but then also the, the back, the back nine, if you will, where you come home and, and a lot of times it seems to not meet their expectations and also yeah. they have to figure out what to do with the rest of their lives. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's, that's you, 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 you focus so much on one thing once you accomplish it, most of these people are in their twenties or maybe thirties, but now they have the rest of their life. Where do you, you know, most of us go through life and we take a step and a step forward and step forward and we get promoted or we start a new business or we do something or we accomplish a goal or we make a big sale or whatever it is. Um, once you hit the peak, what do you do from here? And I, I'm sure that's part of what you're going to talk about. I've certainly never experienced that, but I can imagine that, you know, you, you it, it just makes sense. You know, I've, I've accomplished it, but now I still have 60, 70 more years to live. <laughs> what do I do now? And some of them go into broadcasting and things like that, but even that's probably not what they want, but it's also, that's a very small percentage that, that, that get to do, you know, stay in the game, so to speak. So most people have to go into, a, you know, just change their whole life. And that's yeah, it tends to be the ones who made the money on the front end, right. the broadcast money. I mean, Tom Brady just signed a $330 million uh, broadcast deal. Um, you look at who NBC brings out to the Olympics, it's Michael Phelps and Lindsey Vaughn and right. um, the same athletes who have already done well. So, um, but that's our culture. That's American culture is, you know, the top 1% seems to get a lot of the, the benefits. So, yeah, it all makes sense. That's who people recognize. So that's who they want to watch, but you know, we can't just forget about the rest. And, and that's what you're doing here is, you know, bring a little light to the, to the others out there that are, that are basically have to start open and become unknown completely versus, you know, where they've, where they've been standing on that pedestal. So, um, you, I, I want to mention a little bit, we talked about your background, but I, I was reading your, your resume and bio and you've, uh, this isn't your first rodeo. Uh, you've made some really award-winning films. You've won, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think you've won some Emmys and you want to tell, tell us about your background as far as the accomplishments and the rewards you've got for the movies you made, because you're not, you're not an amateur. This is, this is the real deal. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I've been working on the craft for a long time. I grew up in Los Angeles and went to the university of Arizona and pretty much right out of college just started to uh, get into production and learn how to tell these kinds of stories, mostly unscripted, but I've also written a number of scripts and some of them have, have even been produced or optioned. Um, Worked at the NFL Network for about seven seasons, and that was a great experience because uh, we were just pumping out stuff. I mean, I'd fly to Seattle on a Monday, interview Russell Wilson on a Tuesday, and a four-minute piece would be on Thursday. 
Um, so it made me very decisive, especially in the, in the editing room, so to speak. Yeah. So I've, I've done a lot of stuff for clients. And as you mentioned, some of it's been nominated or won uh, Emmy awards, including I did a film about the, uh, the history of Dodger town, which is where the Dodgers would go to spring training mm-hmm. uh, for, for many, many years in Vero beach, Florida. They're now yeah. in Arizona. Um, but it was where everybody from Jackie Robinson to, Fernando Valenzuela came to train and uh, we were fortunate enough to have uh, both Vin Scully and uh, the late Larry King narrate that one. Wow. Um, That one won an Emmy and uh, yeah, I've kind of gone between doing stuff for clients and, and doing things independently. The weight of gold was done independently and ultimately fortunately HBO uh, picked it up, you know, um, once it was mostly complete. Um, but now we're really focused on doing more of these mental health projects. Great. As I mentioned, we have some, some partnerships with some other uh, A-list athletes, including Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, we're going to do a film with him about you know NASCAR Nation, as we call it, and um, DeMar DeRozan from the Chicago Bulls, mm-hmm. uh, as well as my longtime friend, Bodie Miller, um, that are all focused on some specific demographics mm-hmm. and just looking to continue to you know, bust the stigma like we talked about before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing that. I, and I've never been in the movie business, but I've heard a little bit about it. And I, I know you, you're you yeah. going through the same kind of mental stress. You got to get the money. You've got to get the people. You've got to sell the story. And it's not just like you think think about doing something and it's all done and produced and you're seeing people are seeing it at a theater. It's a, it's a huge process, a lot of pressure. Uh, most of them fail. Uh, so getting it to this point is yeah. a huge accomplishment. Yeah, tough business. And, but I mean, I think the advice I'd give to anybody who's listening, who's interested in, in doing this kind of stuff is really find what excites you. And one thing I found early was if I was telling a story that my heart was in, Mm -hmm. it always turned out better. And when my heart wasn't in it, it didn't turn out well. Yeah. Um, So, you know, finding stories that really mean something to you because you're going to end up spending so much time on it. And it is a long journey to get these things funded and made and then distributed. And, um, you know, you got to do stuff that really matters to you if you can. Yeah. Well, this film matters. Uh, I'm looking for, I haven't seen it, but I've seen the trailer and I'm very much looking forward to seeing it on Sunday with the others. So, uh, you know, if you have a, it's always a beautiful time to come to Coronado on a Sunday morning in the summer, any time of year. So just make this your excuse. Come on over and watch this movie. Uh, Brett's going to be there. Maybe you'll be, have a chance to meet with him. Um, talk to him a little bit. I think you're going to answer some questions and things. So, um, I, I, I just can't encourage people enough to, to drive over and, and make a morning of it, you know, have some breakfast and go to the movie and, and maybe change your life and the way you look about things, things. I wanted to thank you real quick about, uh, for mentioning Russell Wilson, by the way, I'm, I'm from Colorado. So I'm a big Bronco fan. So I'm hoping Russell can help us out this year. We certainly need it. So. <laughs> anyway. In high school is John Elway. So, oh yeah. Well, of course he's my guy. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, listen, thank you so much. Uh, anything else you want to add that I, uh, that I missed on other than. Uh, thanks for having me on and uh, hope to see, hope to see y'all on Sunday. Sounds good. It's going to be there. I'll, I'll meet you there. Look I'm forward to meeting you in person. San Diego. What's that? I'm going to try to beat the traffic right now. Well, good luck. Good luck with that. But once you get here, you'll be happy you did and uh, have a great weekend in San Diego. We'll see you on Sunday morning. That's our show, everyone. Um, Brett, thanks so much for for being here today. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors also, Saquon Casino, Attorney King, and um, who am I missing? IB Fitness. I'm so sorry. Uh, That's our show, Local Umbrella Connect. See you on Sunday. Come on over.